pleasure to meet all at last, and welcome back to Why Is That? Now here on Why Is That, I don't really know about you, but I feel like this question right here might be a little ingrunging, but you know what? You might learn a few things here and there. This question, in general, is actually going to start talking about at least one particular feature channel that I have known as the Wilsonator. But, the question down here simply asks me, why is that one of your featured channels happens to be a brony? And if you don't know what a brony is, then well, short definition, a brony is a diehard fan of My Little Pony. Yeah. That's basically what that is. A fan of My Little Pony. But you know what though? The My Little Pony fan base isn't really the only type of fan base out there to have some slang terms like that that refers to a hardcore fan of something like that. Just like with, well, My Little Pony and Bronies being hardcore fans of that franchise, we have the Star Wars fan base. And of course, there's a lot of names. That would probably be too long for me to list them out altogether, but it's just crazy. We got fan bases of certain franchises all over the place that happen to have some of their own slang terms and the whatnot that happen to describe hardcore or diehard fans of these franchises out there. There's diehard fans for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, diehard fans for some video game series like Pac-Man or Mario or Sonic the Hedgehog. There's diehard fans for some comic book related characters, fans of music and whatnot. I mean, pop culture is all over the place. And yet, we have to come up with terms that happen to describe some hardcore fans out there in some of these fan bases, regardless of what franchise it, that they're going for. But you know what, though? I might as well explain a few things. If you don't know who the Wilsonator is, then, well, let's go back as far back as summer of 2006, around the same time that my first Twitter account had been established, making it one of the oldest Twitter accounts to ever exist at that time. One of the first, to be specific. William Grubb, who was born on August 12, 1991, turned 15 at the time of my first Twitter account's creation. I don't really know if that's much of a coincidence or whatnot, because this was, in fact, before I even knew who William Grubb was. And more importantly, what kind of content did Grubb have to offer? Because the first time I noticed who William Grubb was, well, was back around the start of 2008, when I knew what YouTube was. Thanks to the Pughead Tilt video on YouTube, which had been uploaded around the start of 2008, I was able to catch a glimpse of other videos relating to pugs and dogs in general, such as a music video based on pugs and donuts, as well as a video that tells you how to bowl with a pug, as in how to knock over pins using a pug as a bowling ball. I mean, those were some pretty fun videos back then. Quite a cult phenomenon, as a matter of fact, was what it was. But eventually, after doing some more research, the recommendations to the right led me to a web series known as TNF. Yeah, as simple as that. TNF. Relating to Thomas and Friends. And that, of course, is a huge, huge series that even continues to this day. I mean, I still do see a lot of Thomas and Friends related merchandise in stores. But looking back at how I was such a big fan of that series back then, in, especially in 2008, what I can say about that for sure is that, well, to finally see someone on YouTube pretty much taking a lot of inspiration and a lot of, well, I guess, credibility in the source material that they're utilizing and creating their very own version of a TNF-related series on YouTube, that was incredible. I had no idea people could do something like that. I had no idea people could create their own series and whatnot on the internet and gain a lot of popularity. I mean, they actually did get a lot of, well, views and subscribers at that time. But it wasn't at all enough to, well, combat against other YouTubers out there during that time in the late 2000s. Like Fred or Niga Higa or anyone else like that. 
But anyways, what else can I can say about William Grubb and the TNF saga on YouTube? Well, first of all, it kept going after the year 2008 because, as far as my knowledge, it actually continued up until around summer of 2009. Yeah. And then eventually, that same year, there was a Halloween special about Thomas and Friends, dressed up as certain, well, characters and whatnot, like Dr. Onagatopus? I forget. Along with other characters like Burger King, the Cable Guy, and Dengaku Man, Homestar Runner. I mean, I could remember every single one of them off the top of my head. I mean, that's how great my memory serves, because that was amazing. A two-part Halloween special on YouTube showcasing the TNF saga in action. But unfortunately, it would be one of the last times that William Grubb would offer some TNF-related content, especially because Grubb was still in high school during that time, and, of course, would eventually go into college by the 2010s. So it was a wonder why Grubb was so, like, busy with everything in the past. But then eventually came along a six-part Q&A video starring William Grubb. It was the first time I ever saw Grubb on camera, and let me tell you, that whole Q&A was awesome. I mean, it doesn't really show up today for some reason. Maybe Grub might have deleted them or whatnot, but I just don't even know what was the purpose of deleting something when it was that awesome back then. And as a speaking of deleting something, I mean, there was also a birthday special relating to the TNF saga, which also took place during the time that the TNF saga was in motion. It happened around 2008. That same year that I knew about YouTube for the first time, that same year that I knew about William Grubb's Miss Oliver and Blossom YouTube channel for the first time, and that same year where the TNF saga on YouTube was also something that I could really get into. August of 2008 was a time where a, ha where a happy birthday special, known as Happy Birthday Moab, M-O-A-B, which would be short for Miss Oliver and Blossom, had been uploaded. It was essentially just a little, I guess, a little skit, but then it turned into a music video where it pretty much featured a Justin Timberlake song that was brand new at the time. It had been released around that time in summer 2008 and was also featured in the credits of Get Smart, the 2008 reboot. You could tell that this song was like one of those relics from the year 2008 that anyone could remember. And there were quite a lot of other things from that same year that had also taken place. But you know what? That year in particular was huge. Especially because it was the first time I ever got to know about YouTube. The first time I ever got to know about someone other than everyone I knew about at school. Someone who made an original series for YouTube. Someone who managed to create a pretty good series for what it is, someone who was able to make parodies out of a lot of things out there, and so on and so forth, and I know I'm just rambling about all this good stuff here, but that's only because it's true! Wow. I'm diving really deep into that territory right there, but you know what? Long story short, by the start of the 2010s, at the same time that William Grubb was still going through college, and probably some jobs as well. I mean, Grubb was definitely juggling through a pretty big schedule here and there. As tight as it was and as busy as ever will be. William Grubb certainly does a lot of work to try and have a great future ahead. But you know what? Even as a diehard fan of My Little Pony, I mean, I don't know about you, but I'm not embarrassed about it. There's lots of people I know who love My Little Pony. And they're bronies themselves. And there actually do exist a couple of convention centers, especially one called BronyCon in Baltimore. And let me tell you about the 2013 trip that William Grubb and other members of the Miss Oliver and Blossom crew pretty much went through. It was amazing. That was awesome. I mean, a 2013 series of vlogs that were bent on BronyCon. I mean, that was the first time I ever saw what BronyCon was. 
August of 2013, it would be around that same time that William Grubb would be 22 years old. But now William Grubb is going to be turning 29 years old. So seven years later, I'm pretty sure Grubb is going to be handling it out pretty good here. But you know what? There is just way, way more things out there that I would like to talk about Grubb because I'm still a pretty big fan of Grubb's work considering how Miss Oliver and Blossom was one of the very first big YouTube channels I ever got to know about. Really big, it was. But it's not at all as big as channels today like PewDiePie, KSI, or T-Series. But you know what, though? Someday, I might run up alongside those guys. And the only ways to do that, though, would be to like, subscribe, comment, follow me on social media, and stay on the Hollywood side.